Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for November 20th, 2020. So my goodness, everyone, um, if I sound a little bit differently today, um, not quite as wound up as I usually am, I guess, it's, I, I had a bit of a, um, uh, an asthma problem um, yesterday with a lot of coughing and a lot of things. I think I've got that under control, but I'm still a little bit sensitive and I'm kind of baby in my voice here just a little bit. So um, please bear with me. But I am, in, I am feeling fine. Uh, there was concern from some folks that maybe I have COVID or something. And although I'll probably go get a test on that, I'm I'm extremely confident I don't because I really haven't been around anyone. So, but let's take a look at the market here this morning. Kind of some interesting things happened um, yesterday and then uh, during the night here that could move us around a little bit. First off, yesterday those bulls came in fighting hard to hold support so we've got to give up yesterday to the bulls they they held on trends of the these indexes continue to hold up well it looked like early on in the morning there may be a major threat to push down those bulls fought back strongly and as they continue to try to look past um, some of these COVID numbers and things like that we still have that considerable concern up here. Now, I look at this chart and, and I see that possibility that we have, well, we have this island up here that runs a fairly significant risk if we do get that selling wave and we push down into this gap. So just kind of be careful. And as we head into a holiday weekend with coronavirus numbers surging once again to a new record high, there may be reason to be a little bit concerned about that as well. Um, let's take a look here. If we if we uh, put a couple lines on here of price support in the chart, and we have, of course, this price support across here that's trying to hold us right now. If we can hold up here, I say the bulls are in control. They, As long as we continue to hold up here, the bulls maintain their control of the market. And as I've been mentioning for quite some time, that possibility that we could just go through a longer term consolidation choppy market up here, waiting for our um, moving averages to kind of catch up, kind of absorb this big move in the market. However, if that news can, you know, shifts a little bit, if that sentiment shifts a little bit, and heading into this weekend, there may be some reason for, you know, just that concern to be rising as more and more states are adding restrictions and locking things down due to these rising COVID numbers, that if we see that selling wave come in and we break this support, that would be the major concern here for me, is if we were to break that price support, fall into this gap, that could be a significant drop um, in the market and, and it would really, it could weigh heavily on the other indexes that don't look nearly as bearish or, or don't look as, I shouldn't say don't, because the, the Dow does not look bearish. It doesn't look nearly as scary, I should say. Let's take a look um, here on our moving averages and just realize that we have a long ways to go here yet for that 50 day moving average to catch up could be another week two weeks of consolidation up here for those levels to catch up so um, a sideways consolidation would be healthy for the market um, if we can spill off some of this volatility and not fall into that gap let's take a look at the spy spy also holding up very well and it. You got to give it to the bulls, but there is a little bit of concern here in one of these patterns. And notice that we have that possibility that we created this lower high in the market. At the same time, we have these higher lows. This is what's known as a pennant pattern. And pennant patterns have kind of the reputation where they can be kind of 50, 50, either direction, either we break the top side of that or we fail down through the bottom side of that. So a little bit of, you know, concern here as well in that chart with kind of that 50-50 um, 
uh, potential in that chart. And if we take a look here, we do have some support lower. So even if we were to move down, we may catch some price support in here. That would be good. If we fall through that, however, I would say that we're probably looking more um, to a pullback into here. So if this doesn't hold, then watch for that sub subsequent move that may take us down into this area. We also want to recognize the fact that we have this resistance here that we've kind of been struggling with right now and whether or not we can break up through there. So let's watch that close. And once again, that 50 day moving average, it's got a lot of work to do yet to catch up. There's another week, two weeks maybe before this actually moves up here. So if we went into a more of a sideways choppy consolidation, I do think that's healthy for um, the SPY. Let's take a look at the cues. Q's gives me a little bit more concern. It's a little bit more perplexing, but we saw as COVID numbers, <coughs> excuse me, COVID numbers rose up <coughs> and um, we saw that um, more and more restrictions were being added. There seemed to be a move back into some of the tech, the, some of the safety of tech. But one thing I want to point out is we do have this downtrend, and I really need to draw that, but this downtrend right here that we want to pay pretty close attention to in that chart. And as we kind of hang in here on there, we're testing this downtrend resistance of this chart, and we still have a significant level of price resistance right here that we need to work through. So watch that closely. This is kind of that double whammy of resistance here in um, the NASDAQ, so watch that closely. However, if we continue to get more and more restrictions, there may be a little bit of a flight back into some of these big techs for safety. Kind of keep an eye here on this as well, that 50 day moving average rallying it up. Uh, again, another week or so maybe, if we were to consolidate here, that might catch up, adding to kind of the bullish image here in the chart. It's gonna help a lot if we can break that downtrend. Let's take a look at IWM. Now IWM, surprisingly strong, just continues to hold up. And this is that rotation, I think, into other plays here in the market, breaking through this uh, multi um, high resistance here, breaking through and not only that, but showing some considerable strength and holding. Yesterday, while the other indexes were gapping lower, um, um, IWM barely made that move down and continued to push back up with those financials trying to recover throughout the day and oil sector stocks recovering throughout the day trying to hold that up. Once again, however, I want to point out that we could go through a longer term consolidation up in here just waiting for that 50 day to finally catch up to the market, um, if that is if we don't pull back. If we were to pull back and lose this level, then it would be a bit of a concern, um, but we have significant price levels um, in this chart that could still um, hold that. So if we dip down below and we're able to pop right back up, I'm not sure that would be a major problem here in IWM, but certainly something to um, keep an eye on. Let's take a look at the VIX. <clears throat> the VIX, continues to be challenged. <clears throat> um, we, we can't seem to spill off all of this fear. And it's, it's really, really odd that we're trying to press new highs. We're trying to set new records, uh, push the Dow up around 30,000. And we still see the VIX very elevated here, uh, closing yesterday at a 23 handle, holding on to those that 50 day moving average. But once again, I'm not seeing a major spike in fear right now. So, um, I'm going to repeat this again. I think um, we could rally off of this level if sellers come in, but we'll look for that 50 day moving average here um, or that downtrend here to maybe prevent us from rallying too hard in that chart. And I don't think we have a major sell off wave in the market unless we break through this area up here, hold it as support and then we could really see a, a spike in fear. So just keep a close eye on it, but right now I don't see any major fear swirling around in the market. Let's take a look at T2122, which is the four week new high, new low ratio. 
this still gives me concern. And um, although we did experience that little bit of a pullback yesterday, notice we, we really didn't change anything up here. We're still in this bearish reversal zone. And it does suggest that more pullback um, is likely in the market. However, short term wise, real short term wise, if we can get ins inspiration someplace, we might be able to push back up here um, into these really high levels. Remember, um, this doesn't tell us when it's going to move, just tells us that we have that risk of an overbought condition in the short term. And remember, a longer term consolidation could also allow this to pull back. So we'll want to watch that closely in um, the market. So be, be really careful here. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Our economic calendar has some interesting things on it. Um, well, actually, it doesn't have any interesting things on it for today. Um, we have one of the lightest economic calendar days today that we've had in some time. So we've got three Fed speakers on here. Now, I don't know, maybe they'll comment on this Treasury decision um, to remove uh, some of the provisions of the CARES Act by the end of the year. That's drawing some heavy criticism from the Fed this morning. So that's an interesting thing in the news that's going on and we're seeing treasury yields decline on that in, in the US dollar uh, trying to perk up on that news. Um, you know when we stop spending, um, stop um, printing money, then um, US dollar uh, devaluing st starts to stop. So I can't tell you that that is a good decision. I wouldn't want to tell you that's a good decision. I don't know um, I don't have all the insight on that, but I will tell you that we could see some market moves and some currency fluctuations as a result of that um, decision um, today and over the next couple of weeks. So watch that closely. We uh, on the earnings front, we have a lighter day as well with <clears throat> less than 20 companies reporting earnings. And most of those are going to be uh, very small cap companies that really don't have much effect on the market. But I do have a handful here to point out today that we might want to keep an eye on. Take a look at BKE, um, the buckle. Um, retail yeah, um, has been doing very, very well. And as you can see, the buckle has been very strong, pushing through this resistance level here. Here, and you can see it's gapping up this morning. We had a recent pullback, had a nice bullish candle on this yesterday. Gapping up this morning here, this is today's morning candle. So apparently uh, some good earnings, beautiful upside trend. Trends holding up well in here. So if you um, uh, like those retail stocks, this might be one to be keeping an eye on. Take a look at Foot Locker, another retailer. Foot Locker will be reporting today. Um, keep an eye on that. <clears throat> Looks like it's trying to push up today in, this is today's candle, trying to push up in here, gap up on those earnings reports, but it is pulling back at the moment. So watch that one closely as we come into the day and just realize that um, this is breaking through some resistance highs and um, looking relatively strong here, as you can see, pu pumping right on through here, holding some trends. I think it probably needs a rest or pullback before I would want to jump in on that, kind of slide back in here toward the trend but something to keep an eye on. Um, take a look at um, HP. HP will be reporting today. Um, oil and gas has been very, very strong here recently. And I, I would put this in the category as also short-term overextended um, in the chart, but we'll keep an eye on that earnings report today. Notice that we're trying to break through some resistance levels. And I think any rest up here, if we were to rest right in there, that area, notice we could put in a, a really nice looking cup and handle pattern that could form in here. Um, we could also see this pop through and pull back, uh, putting in a nice little pattern here for the upside. So watch that close. HP, a lot of these um, energy companies really have turned to the upside. Um, Last one I'm going to um, cover this morning is JKS. Keep an eye on this one. Uh, solar has been um, remarkably strong um, in the anticipation of a Biden win um, because the, it's expected that, that we're going to really um, increase um, 
our look at these renewable energies under his administration. And so take a look at this. We, we've been in a little bit of a downtrend, but we're holding on to some support levels. And if these solar companies can really start to produce some good earnings reports, we might be able to perk out of there. And with the hopes of um, a, an easier transition into some of these renewables under a new administration, there may be some upside here to pay attention to. So watch that close. For those of you that are still holding out hope that uh, President Trump's going to somehow figure out how to pull this out, then um, we could also see if, if that were to occur, a, a downside move here. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, everyone, if you could do me a favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. You know, looking at the analytics in, um, in YouTube, I get a lot of views um, from folks that still have not subscribed. And I don't know what would prevent you from doing that. It doesn't cost you anything. And um, I really would like to encourage you to do that. It helps us out here, helps us continue to grow the channel. If you find this information useful, please take the time to do that. It does take a considerable amount of effort, as you might uh, imagine, producing a daily video here. And for those of you who um, click those thumbs up buttons and leave comments, I just wanna say thank you so much. And, and, and everyone who um, takes the time to share this video on, on their social platforms, I appreciate that as well. You guys are awesome. So thank you so much. Let's take a look <clears throat> at a few charts that could be setting up. And remember, I'm gonna be a little bit cautious here. Um, remember, we're sliding into a weekend. We hit 180 plus, 185 plus coronavirus infections yesterday. We got the Treasury and the Fed kind of battling things out. I'm not sure that this is the kind of environment heading into a weekend and then heading into a holiday trading week where I wanna be adding a bunch of risk. In fact, I would probably be more inclined to be pulling back on my risk, um, going closer and closer to cash um, because of the potential volatility that could occur. But that being said, there are trades out there to be taking note of and watching. Take a look at this chart, um, YNDX. This was brought up to me by one of the members of Rightway Options yesterday, and I like this chart. And here's some of the things I like about it. We're breaking that downtrend here in the chart. Broke that downtrend rallying up and we're holding it here in this nice little consolidating pattern. Now I do think there is that opportunity that this could still slide a little bit over here toward trend before it really gets busy and gets going. But I do think it's worth putting um, um, some time and energy into evaluating that chart, drawing it up and maybe waiting for a potential trade to occur. You see, I placed an alert and it did cross that alert yesterday. I didn't buy it because of the uncertainty, the bull and bear tug and war that's going on, but I do think this chart has some potential. So might wanna put that on your list. Also, anything in the heavy equipment area, uh, John Deere showing lots and lots of strength here and been holding up really strong. What I like about this chart is this tight consolidation that we're forming in here. Notice how we're kind of spilling off that volatility that we had over here, that big move of volatility, we're kind of spilling that off. And what I'm watching this for is that possibility. And I, this line, um, trend line up here, may not be accurate as to where we're going to move. If you notice, if I drew that here, we've kind of slipped past that trend line already. I drew that up here just to kind of keep an eye on this. If we can get some kind of uh, bullish move here in the chart, if those bulls decide to step back in, then that pop out of here could be really substantial. And of course, um, you know, with the whole idea of recovery, um, we're going to need these heavy equipment makers uh, producing that equipment if we're going to see those infrastructure changes and things like that that, you know, both both potential administrations have been talking about. So watch that closely, John Deere. You could also um, just go right on through other um, equipment operators, um, those big guys like Cummins. Um, Cummins um, looking good. Um, holding up in here, this is um, in a beautiful upside trend, nice little bullish candle yesterday, that possibility of pushing through onto the upside. And Caterpillar is another one of those looking quite strong. And you can see um, it would be an easy 
um, easy potential alert right in here to see if we can pop on through, maintain this move, and um, move on higher here in Caterpillar. Blue skies above, by the way, here in Caterpillar. Other charts that you might want to take a look at. Take a look at Marvel. This was also brought to me by someone in RWO yesterday. And a nice little pop. I placed an alert, and just shortly after I placed the alert, it pushed on through into that chart. Now, one of the things you want to consider in charts like this is whether or not we have enough momentum in this market to actually push us through this double top high. But I like this pattern. It may be something to just keep an eye on. Some of you may see this as, as an absolute buy right now. I think for me, I would probably, heading into the weekend and the holiday, probably be more inclined to just go ahead and let it do what it needs to do here if it has to rest a little bit more. Or if those bulls actually push it through up here, I'll wait for that opportunity up here. So watching that one closely certainly should be um, on your list. And as we continue to head toward these holidays, and Black Friday sales are cranking up all over the place. You want to uh, keep an eye on some of these shippers. I think shippers um, have that potential to just do extremely well um, this year, um, assuming that they can keep up with the volumes. So watch these shippers closely. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you a great trading day and an awesome, awesome weekend. And hey guys, I just want to continue to echo out there to be careful, be safe, get that mask on. I mean, what's the big deal? Get that mask on, protect yourself and the other people around you as much as possible. This is dangerous stuff. A lot of people are dying from this COVID thing. So I want to see you back here. I want to see you trading. I want to see you healthy. Everyone take care, have an awesome weekend, and we'll see you bright and early Monday morning.